Today's video is based on a tech YouTube premise older than time itself. What happens when you pair the motherboard equivalent of a misjudged wet fart with a top-of-the-line gaming CPU? Can this little entry-level loser MSI H410 motherboard handle a 10-core i9-10850K monster of a CPU? And if it can, what kind of gaming performance should we expect? This seems to be the worst motherboard that supports a 10 core Intel CPU that I could find and it looks real bad. Uh, so it's an H410 Pro by MSI and it's Pro in nothing other but name. Uh, so let's get into the box and see what we have in here. And as you can see, it looks like the kind of motherboard that comes in a cheap office pre-built. It's, it's not a good looking motherboard. And one of the reasons why I think it's going to be quite funny to try and run that 10 core i9 in here is because of this, the power delivery on this motherboard. Having a closer look at the power delivery, honestly, it's much less of a train smash than you'd imagine at this price point and motherboard time. As far as the controller goes, it's using a Richtech RT3607BC, which MSI uses quite regularly on their entry level motherboards it's a four plus two phase pwm controller now it seems like they're using doublers on these four phases because there are eight sets of power phases to the left of the socket here the only thing that worries me about this power delivery is the fact that there isn't any cooling on it which can affect the amount of power that it can actually deliver to the cpu so i'm i'm really curious to see how this is going to be able to handle the i9 10 core cpu one thing that i do want to say that is reasonably impressive i guess about about this very brown motherboard is it's still got a bunch of modern features on it. You have front USB 3, which I guess isn't modern anymore, but you've got an M.2 slot for storage. You've got another M.2 slot, which you can probably use for like a Wi-Fi module or something like that. And you've even got an RGB header on it, which is surprising. And what's nice is that up here, you can see in the corner, you do actually have what looks like post LEDs. So that'll help for diagnosing any potential issues you have with this motherboard. In my mind, the worst part about this motherboard is the rear I.O. If you look at that, it's only got two USB 3 ports, but it's still got a dinosaur display out on it, which I haven't seen on a motherboard in a long time. But considering that this is a motherboard for like office PCs, I guess the VGA out does make sense. Now, in order to see how much the motherboard equivalent of Jerry negatively affects the gaming performance of our i9, we're gonna have to get a baseline test. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to test the 10850K in an NZXT N7 Z490 motherboard, which has a reasonable VRM. It's not anything fancy, but it's more than enough to consistently run the 10850K at about 5.1 gigahertz with an all core overclock, which should give it just right there an advantage over the H410 board, which, which can't overclock. And then as far as the graphics card goes, we're using the RTX 3080, which I molested in a previous video with liquid metal and stuff. So if you wanna cringe real hard, go check out that video. And then finally, when it comes to the RAM, I'm gonna be using 32 gigs of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. Now, that's actually one of the differentiating factors between H410 and Z490, is that with H410, you can't run RAM faster than 2933 megahertz. Now, it's Intel, so it's not going to make a massive difference, but that'll that'll add up a little bit. So with that, let's have a look at the baseline. And the baseline performance is very good, but I mean, it's a very high-end 2020 gaming system, so obviously it's gonna perform well at 1080p. Although, interestingly enough, I recently did a bunch of videos with a Ryzen 5 5600X, which actually gives a higher frame rate in CSGO, which is wild. That was unheard of just two CPU generations ago. But anyway, with that, let's take the 10850K out of the reasonable motherboard to pair it with and drop it in the loser H410 motherboard that it's already in. Um, now, after I actually show you the benchmark figures, I'm also gonna talk you through what the system's actually doing while running the CPU in that motherboard, and then we'll see what happens if we game for more extended periods of time. 
Now those results were actually a lot more impressive than I thought they were going to be. And the reason for that is because this motherboard can kind of handle the 10850K. The biggest difference between the two setups is just the fact that you can't overclock above the max boost frequency of the 10850K. But the max boost frequency is already like 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz, which that's very high for 10 cores of power or whatever. Um, but the story goes a bit deeper than that because all of these benchmarks were just taken on the first run of the whatever benchmark it was that we're using. But the story changes quite quickly when you run multiple runs. As you can see here, the actual VRM temperature, which I have listed here, slowly creeps up into very worrying temperatures. And after about three or four runs, you'll see that it hits 100 degrees Celsius, which means that you can actually boil water on this motherboard's VRM. And when it hits that point, it throttles the CPU down from its max boost frequency to the base frequency of about 3.6 gigahertz. And when that happens, you get a reasonable drop in performance, and then the frame rate fluctuates quite a lot. So what I decided to do was redo the benchmarks after about five runs while the VRM was nice and hot with Rainbow Six Siege. So yeah, if you just game for three minutes, then yes, it looks like the systems perform very similarly. But but if you extend it into a longer period of time, then it's it's starting to look worse for the little loser motherboard. Still very good, but not, not as good as it was in the motherboard that makes more sense for it. And then finally, I decided to see how bad we can get this effect to be. So I just removed the fan that was blowing on the VRM of the motherboard. And that meant that it just hit 100 degrees much more quickly. And then it took longer to drop down to the temperature where it started boosting back up again. Um, so yeah, the fan made a little bit of a difference and here is the frame rate difference that it led to. In conclusion, I'm actually pretty impressed with how the VRM equivalent of a 1997 Toyota Corolla handled the i9-10850K. Now, that doesn't mean we should all go out and buy H410 motherboards for our i9s, but yeah, it was, it was a reasonable effort on the part of a very budget motherboard. Now, again, you don't want a component regularly throttling down from 100 degrees Celsius. That's not good at all. But depending on what games you're playing, it's not going to happen that regularly. For example, I played a bunch of Escape from Tarkov on this system and it didn't ever throttle down from the max boost frequency. And that's because the 10850K has so much CPU power that you're most likely not gonna utilize the CPU to the max and it means the VRM isn't gonna have to deliver a huge amount of power to the CPU, which means it won't overheat. Again, this isn't a great pairing, but the motherboard held up better than I thought it was going to. So with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a great Christmas, and until the next video, bye-bye.